Hi everybody, we are uh, back here with Shire Shenanigans and this is Coffee School Part 2. That's the finish uh, and where we get to actually sample what we did the other day where we roasted the coffee. So it's been um, about a day and a half since we did that, right? Yep. About a day and a half. And so uh, between 24 and 36 hours since we uh, actually roasted the coffee and um, we put it in this vessel right here and this is kind of a unique thing what it does is it has a plunger in there it allows you to uh, to let the coffee beans off gas but also protects them from exposure to too much air right oh yes exactly from so oxygen from so oxygen. they come in all shapes and sizes they're made by airscape i highly recommend them uh, they come with nice lids too and uh, they're really nice for keeping your coffee as fresh for as long as you possibly can. And it allows, like, like Dad said, for the CO2 to vent out so you don't have any uh, premature staling going on. So you should keep the beans in here and then after they've off gas for a while, they actually have a little mechanism where you can completely lock it down shut. So oh, that's what nice. that does? That yep, actually locks, locks it? Shut. So then it's completely airtight. Exactly. And then what I like to do is I like to take a dry erase marker and just write the name of the coffee just for my own reference so then you can write the date on there as well so aaron's got quite a setup here with his uh with his coffee uh, uh um preparation station right here so what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a couple things we're going to do a pour over which is a chemex this is uh what that's called right there it's, it looks like a, a glass beaker it's called a chemex that's uh, for a pour over and then uh, Aaron's going to show you also uh, his, some of his other equipment here. It's a little harder to see, but um, who makes your grinder there? It's called the DF64. It's actually made in China, but it's extremely durable and a pretty popular single uh, dose grinder. And you could set it really from making Turkish coffee all the way up to even coarser than you would do with a French press. So a ton of variety. So it really is important. The coarseness of your grind determines how you're going to use the coffee, whether you're going to make an espresso or pour over or anything like that, right? Exactly. So, uh, for making an espresso, you do a fine grind, and it actually the grind determines the uh, how, what method you're going to use uh, more than the actual bean itself. So you could really use a light roast for espresso, or a uh, you know or a traditional dark roast. Same thing with the pour overs as well. It's all about the uh, coarseness of your grind. Let me show you a couple of the things Aaron does that's pretty cool. So th this is the cup that uh, the grinder uh, uses. And it's a, it's a small amount, it appears. But what it is, is what, what did we determine? We can, get, we can grind about uh, uh, 40 to 50 um, grams at a time right so yeah uh, it'll do a little bit more it'll yeah. probably do around 60 but we just uh, for our dose for the chemex we do about 50 grams and we uh, find that that works the best so you can eyeball it uh, what i use to measure a lot of times too um i'll use this actually on my scale this is an old protein scooper but you can use that you can use old coffee scoops you have around and then i just have like a very cheap amazon scale with a timer built in it's a really nice feature. I think it was like $9. I'll try to put it in the link of the video. But this really helps you get just the most consistent cup of coffee you possibly can. Uh, that way when you find out what you like, you'll be sure to have it every single morning. And then one of the other things Aaron does that's pretty cool is he pre-measures his espresso uh, grinds and puts them in these test tubes so that when it comes time to actually make an espresso with the, machine, with the grinder and the espresso machine, he already has it pre-measured out. So these are pre-measured. What what volume is that? So I use 20 grams in my espresso, and I find I like that the, the best. And my it's basket, delicious, but it's strong. <laughs> my basket I'm using is, I think, about a 20, maybe 22 gram basket, and it actually works pretty well. Uh, no complaints. And eventually I'm going to make a uh, wooden holder for my test tubes. Uh, you can check out my Instagram. That'll hopefully be coming in the next few weeks. Now, now your espresso machine, which is over in the corner and you can kind of see it back there. What kind is that? Uh, it's a Pasquini, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's an Italian, uh, like kind of a consumer, like a pro, prosumer, I think is what they uh, uh, refer to them as. And it's quite nice. It does really, 
everything you could want an espresso machine to do and more uh, at home. It gives you the ability to steam milk for lattes. Um, you can even do some latte art if you get talented enough with it. And it has the hot water spigot for your teas or Americanos. And then it has a single uh, head and it's a heat exchanger machine. So really you kind of get the both, best of both worlds, especially in a small footprint. And then it just uses your standard uh, 58 millimeter port filter. Can you show me what the, the, the part that goes into the head there? Yep. So this is called your porter filter. And this is what the coffee will go into. And this one is called a, like a naked porter filter. So sometimes at the coffee shops, they'll have the two stems. And uh, those are nice too. They hold heat a little better than this one, but this one allows you to see exactly how your extraction is doing. Uh, so it's kind of a nice way to see, that you make sure you're not getting any defects in your making uh, of the espresso, such as like channeling or anything like that. And that pretty much looks like that. And it's again, just a standard 58 millimeter porter filter. Now the cool thing is that, but that 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 machine is is taking it up kind of a level that most consumers uh, it, it might be a little bit out of reach. Because what did you tell me that machine retails for? It all depends. It's an older machine. I got it secondhand, but when they retail, it's anywhere from thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars. And a lot of the machines coming from Italy are kind of art pieces in themselves. Uh, Breville has some uh, pretty nice units. They're a little bit cheaper. But the Italian units are built to last forever, and the pieces and parts are relatively easy to come by and cheap. So if you do get a unit like this, you'll be able to fix it with the little, you know, tiny things that may go wrong, and it'll really last a lifetime. All right, are we ready to do a pour? Away? All right, let's do it. So what okay. we did first is we just basically used some hot water, and we uh, just basically rinsed the filter paper. You want to do that just to kind of get any taste of the paper out so it's not going to affect your coffee. I like to like swish, like slush around, I guess, the hot water just to kind of heat up the glass carafe. The nice thing about the Chemex too is it makes a great cup of coffee and it also looks really good sitting on your counter. It's kind of an art piece in itself. So after we did that, we got the paper, fil uh, paper filter washed. I'll go ahead and I will uh, dump in my pre-measured grinds. And that in grinds. there that we're putting in for that, that particular one was was a 50, 50 grams of beans that we ground, right? Yes. Okay. And that, the, with the, uh, with this grinder, the DS64, it's very little retention and it has a bellow, which you may not be able to see, but a bellow on top to really ensure you're not holding any grinds. A lot of coffee grinders that uh, have the hopper on top, they'll tend to hold a lot of grinds. So you may measure 50 grams of beans and only get 49 and a half out so not that big of a deal but you'll get uh, stale coffee that's kind of stuck in there so every single time you're making new you have to maybe throw away or put it in a separate bin if you wanted really the freshest coffee possible because if it wasn't a low retention grinder the grinds from this grind would be in there for tomorrow morning as well and you don't want that so. that grinder is really nice for those of you who have home grinders that is really a problem that they get gummed up you just can't help it and you need to clean them fairly frequently but that one with the bellows on it is really pretty pretty nice because it, it basically cleans itself every time now after we do the pour over i'll move the camera over and show you a little bit better look at the at the uh, uh the uh, espresso machine and the grinder so it's a little hard to see right now but we're trying to give you kind of the full picture right now so. yep so that with the chemex or any kind of pour over a scale is really nice because you'll be able to measure your input as far as grinds go and then your output as far as your water or your coffee is concerned. So we've done this a bunch of times and we've kind of found out that our electric kettle actually pretty much holds the perfect amount for the 50 grams. So we're not gonna set the Chemex on the scale, but if you're ever dialing something in with a certain roast, you may want to uh, just to get you know as consistent as you possibly can. So I'm gonna pick the camera up and, and be able to show you because this is where um, we're going to be opening the bloom for the coffee. Yep, so we'll be starting the bloom and a gooseneck kettle is really important. It's not 100% necessary. You don't really need all of the uh, technical things here. Uh, the Chemex and the Chemex paper and good coffee is really all you need to make a great cup. But if you're looking for consistency, this really goes a long way. So what we're gonna wanna do is pour in rotating circles like this. And uh, there's certain ways people do it where they will pour a certain amount, and they'll wait, pour a certain amount, and they'll wait. I tend to just do it like this. I think it works out pretty well. 
So the bloom's looking pretty good there. We're going to let that sit. And uh, the Chemex process takes around the same amount of time, maybe a slightly longer than you would get with a drip coffee. But the nice thing about the Chemex is it does not have a burner underneath, so the coffee is not going to get scalding hot. The only downside to that is if you like really hot coffee, you pretty much have to get it right after it's uh, done brewing. Right um, after it's come through. Exactly. The, okay. Because the, the gloss graph is thick, however, it does not retain heat all that well. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was that almost the ratio that we can come up with for this 50 grams of, of beans was almost a full liter of water, right? Exactly. That's pretty much that, that's what that holds is a liter. Yes. Yeah. So, usually when I'm dialing in a roast or trying a new roast, um, what I'll usually do is I'll weigh it just to kind of get everything... Uh, pretty much consistent to find a recipe I like and this one just happens to be the pretty much the full kettle for 50 grams all right so the it's looking like it needs some more water so we'll just continue to pour in our circular motion it is kind of funny you you can actually see when you start this because Aaron had said when when we were doing the roasting if the coffee's fresh and you add the water you can see the the the, the grounds expand you know, and they expand rapidly. I mean, they, they soak up the water instantly. Yeah, that's that's called the bloom. And with uh, coffee that isn't fresh, you really won't get that. And that bloom is kind of essential when you're trying to unlock a lot of the sweetness or natural sweetness that the coffee has to offer. So, um, pour overs really come in all shapes and sizes. The Chemex is a great one. Uh, it's great for a family. That's kind of what we use when everybody's in town. Uh, they also make smaller Chemexes. Uh, you really can't go wrong. And another one is uh, Aura, uh, made by Aura, and it's pretty nice. It's uh, O-R-E-A, and it's for a single cup. It uses a different filter, but also a very nice option. Yeah, they use little, little like little cup, like little cup filters. Yeah, it's more of your standard, what you would expect to see in a drip coffee machine. It's uh, like this, but all their information is on their website, and I highly recommend them. It's plastic. So extremely durable and uh, quite easy to use. And when I'm trying a new I'm roast, add some water. when I'm trying a new roast or I'm dialing something in, I like to try uh, to experience the coffee how my customers might. So I like to pull espresso shots. I like to do a pour over like this, and then I also like to use the AeroPress, which I highly recommend. I'm a big fan. Uh, works really well, and there's actually AeroPress competitions uh, around the world now because this little device has become so popular. Uh, it's a great little unit for traveling. Again, makes a single cup. And I would say it's similar to a French press, really, when it comes right down to what you would uh, expect to get the type of coffee. Um, it was originally marketed as like a, an espresso, but you're never really gonna get the true pressures necessary to make an espresso. And those are pretty inexpensive, right? Oh yeah, very. And uh, you can find them on Amazon and even at uh, Target. I think I got this one at Target. Now while while we're uh, waiting for that, because this will take a little while to drip through, and you can't you can't really see it as as, as well maybe as um, 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 we would hope in the perfect conditions, but it, it's it's running through slowly, and that that's a factor of it is as Aaron has taught me, the coarser you you put the grind in, the faster it will run through. The finer it and it makes sense because the finer grounds have a tendency to pack down and as a result it takes more time for the water to go through but from a from a taste standpoint um I, i'm saying like a medium or coarser ground is really what you're going for with a chemex pour over right yeah there's definitely a time range that you want to try to get basically all your coffee brewed by uh, you can also kind of play with it too i think i have a section on my uh, website a little blog and it'll describe how to dial in your coffee and that's a it's something that seems daunting at first but once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy if you're tasting something that tastes sour uh, a lot of times it means it's under extracted so if it was under extracted maybe you have too coarse of a grind and the water hasn't been in contact with the coffee for long enough uh, that's if it's sour and if it's bitter 
uh, that might mean that it's uh, over extracted or maybe your grind is too fine. So to remedy either of those, you just grind coarser or finer until you find something that you like. Okay, so we're coming back uh, uh, where we're about done pouring that through. Now, um, are you gonna show us an espresso too? Sure, as we wait for this, we'll set this aside and we'll get work on the espresso. Okay, so on this one, I'm gonna actually pick this up so you can see a little bit better, I think. Um, so like I said, I already had my pre-measured dose here. And when it comes to making a great cup of coffee, pour over is pretty easy. Uh, the Chemex V60 or the Aura or even the uh, Aeropress is kind of hard to mess up as long as you have good coffee and good water and some relative consistency. Espresso on the other hand though, that's kind of where coffee becomes a hobby because there's so many different variables that you're dealing with. So we'll grind up our 20 grams. <laughs> We'll use our bellow. The only bad thing about the grinders, well, grinders in uh, pretty much all grinders, but the single dose, they can be a little messy. That's why I like to just have a paintbrush nearby and the kind of brushes everything off. You can also spray your beans with water, just a very small spritz of water. I just didn't choose to do that this time. That'll kind of help collect the, some of that dust or help keep the dust down. So we take our, uh, we have our dosing cup and our porter filter. So we want to heat up our porta filter. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock it in. And you can also keep it locked in and that'll heat up the porta filter while you're doing everything else. I just didn't have to heat it up. Let that run through a bit. Porta filter is nice and hot. So we're going to take a clean towel. We're going to dry it out. You want your porta filter completely dry. All right, looking pretty dry there. It looks good. Set the towel aside. We will dose our porta filter. So this is kind of where you can start going into the weeds, especially with espresso, all kinds of different tools and techniques. We have our dosing ring or dosing funnel, and this is called the WDT tool. What we do with this, we just kind of get any clumps that potentially uh, were uh, from our dosing cup into our porta filter. Just kind of evenly distribute that, make sure it looks okay. It does. So the WDT tool, that's a relatively new-ish tool, and I think it's actually one of the most important, uh, important tools, that and then the tamper. This is also a really nice tool, it's called a wedge distributor. Just gives you a very nice flat bed to tamp on. You just spin it around a few times, and then we're left with a very flat bed. And then I just recently bought this uh, tamper. It's a weighted tamper, and it has a spring, and it also has this little collar to try to ensure that you're uh, not off kilter at all. Still kind of experimenting with it, and I like it so far, but I still need to do some more before I'm completely sold. So a lot of people get hung up on how much pressure that they want to tamp the espresso with, and it really doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is get the air, uh, any air gaps out of the coffee. Um, some people say 30 pounds, and that's kind of a constant in the industry. So with the heat exchanger machine, we basically want to, uh, there's some boiling water up in the head. We're gonna let that just run through. You hear that crackling, that's just a little too hot to make the espresso with. So we're going to wait till that stops. All right, that looks good there. So I like to go with a two to one, or one to two ratio, I guess you should say when it comes to coffee. So I'm going to do 20 grams of coffee in, and I'm going to want 40 grams of coffee out. And this is kind of where it gets a little weird and tricky because this, we're all gonna try to do this or do this all in about 35 seconds. Now, if it's over extracted, it's gonna be bitter. If it's under extracted, it's gonna be sour. So we're gonna kind of vary the time based on that, but we're always gonna keep 20 grams in and 40 out. All right, so let's do it. Once I see a little bit of coffee drip in, I'm gonna hit the timer. All right, there we go, starting. And the naked uh, porter filter is really nice because you can look down and you can really see how your extraction is coming. Looks like it's running a little bit uh, fast, but that's fine. This is the first shot that we're going to pull. Uh, the beans do change a little bit um, every day. 
So uh, you can kind of expect a little bit of variance here and there. We're not too far off though. All right, we're there. We went a little bit over. We're not gonna worry about that too much. And that was only about 30 seconds. So what we do then is we just basically try it. And if it was good, then we'd stick with that. If it was a little bit uh, under or over extracted, we would just kind of modify the grinds to get to where we wanted it to be. And that's it. And then we're left with a puck that we basically knock into a, what's called a knock box. And then we would rinse out our porta filter and we could pour another shot. Can I, uh, can I try it? Okay. So uh, Aaron's given me the opportunity to try that espresso shot. And uh, we're going to give it a, a quick little thing. Drew's watching me here to see if I like it or not. Let's see. So this is uh, the coffee we did two days ago. Uh, run through the espresso machine. 20 grams of beans, 40 grams of coffee. That's not a lot, but it's magical. Oh, boy. That's the real deal. Now, this in this format, if you're an espresso drinker, that's strong. That's the real deal, but it's absolutely perfect. It's magical. Now, from this, you can do all the things. You can make your your what? You can make your lattes, your lattes, flat whites, your flat things white, such as yeah, that. cappuccino, anything yeah. you might like, macchiato. So, you can also do americano, just adding some water. All right, looks like our Chemex is done. So when we finish that up, we'll basically just it's a pretty easy clean cleanup. Uh, we just have the, basically the bag or the filter here. We'll take it, we'll just throw it away, and then our coffee is ready to serve. Does that look beautiful or what? Look at that. Look at the color of that. That's just absolutely perfect. All right. Now with that, I'm going to try. Oh, here you go. Oh, all right. Oh, look at that. The official... Coffee cup of Gautamalo. You try just a little uh, hit of this. All right, poured some in. Cheers. Ah. Does it get better? No, it doesn't. That's perfect. That is a perfect cup of coffee. That's a beautiful temperature right there. Now, as a pour over, this is the. Uh, for me, this is what I would drink black, or or because the the espresso, um, that's for that's for the that's for guys like this. Yeah. It is magical the flavor, the pour over though, smooth, just absolutely the the perfect cup of coffee. Wonderful, All thank right. you, Aaron. Thank you. All right, so with that, with that. Um, we're gonna wrap this one up. So what we've done is we've gone over, we showed you a pour over technique with a Chemex. Aaron talked to you about, what was the other, an Aura? Yeah, the Aura, the that's aura a single a dose. Single. Then we uh, we did our, our uh, grinder in our espresso machine and we, we did a beautiful, a beautiful pull extraction on this. Um, absolutely terrific, very strong, but very, very good. Very smooth for as strong as it is. And um, I'm telling you what, um, it's it's really good. I I, I mean, it, it, and I'm not saying that because we're doing this. It is absolutely fabulous coffee. So well, thank you. Um, anything else you want to say? No. If you have any questions, you can always email us uh, at gatamalocoffee.com. Gatamalocoffee.com. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Whether you're just curious about coffee, you'd like to try some of ours, or you're looking to basically dive uh, deeper down the coffee rabbit hole. Uh, coffee as uh, in a drip machine, like a Mr. Coffee, is really good. You can really have a great cup of coffee. Um, and then with the pour over, you can just kind of step it up a little bit and really and then, taste. And then when you get to this, <laughs> wow. That's right. But it uh, really allows you to taste the, the individual origins, the different sweetness and aromas that the coffee has to offer. So really definitely a great method of brewing the pour over. French press is great too, I love that. Uh, really, it's, it's all great, it's all different. And the nice thing is, is whether you're doing a pour over an espresso, you can have the same roast taste slightly different, which is always nice too. Awesome, thank you. All right, buddy. thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the, uh, on the, the channel.
Keep those days filled with shenanigans, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.